Hello, everyone. Thank you for attending today's HP webinar. My name is Aubrey, and I'm going to be your host for the day. Presenting to you all today is Carrie Atkins from the North America category in digital services at HP. Before we begin, I'd like to cover a few housekeeping items. Carrie today is going to be screen sharing her presentation for us. So if you open the media player using the menu in the top right hand corner, you will be able to access that and you can minimize any of the widgets as you so desire. At the bottom of your audience console are multiple application widgets that you can use. If you have any questions during the webinar, you can submit your questions in the Q&A box widget and they will be answered in the Q&A portion at the end of the presentation. You can also expand your slide area by clicking on the maximize icon on the top right hand side of the slide viewer. If you have any technical difficulties throughout the presentation, please click on the help widget. And lastly, if you would please take a moment to fill out the survey at the end of the webinar, we would greatly appreciate it. And with that, I will pass it off to Carrie to kickstart today's presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hopefully everybody can hear me okay. I am. Um, thank you for having us join together with Insight and HP to be able to talk through security, what we're doing with Wolf Security specifically, and how we're working and helping with our partners and our customers. So I'll go ahead and jump right in. So a couple of things I definitely want to, to, to highlight as we go through this. As um, said, please be sure to use the Q&A if you have questions that come up during, and we'll be sure to get to those um, at the end just to reiterate. So thank you. So a couple of things definitely to, to kick off on is in regards to security. And so we get a lot of questions from our partners and from our customers um, who are, you know, why is HP so focused on security? What does that look like for us? Kind of where, where did we come from and where are we headed with it? And so a couple of things I just want to highlight on and where it comes from is security is really in our DNA. So when we think about security overall and we look at our hardware and our portfolio, what we have with our hardware, and then where we look where we're going with software, these are two main indicators to really kind of pull these pieces together. So not for, not for without saying, for over 80 plus years, we've been absolutely doing hardware. But when you look at endpoint security in itself, really for the last 20, 25 years, there's been a lot of talk, a lot of committees and so forth that have been focused on the standards that are set by ISO and by NIST. And HP has been absolutely a huge part of that um, that collaboration to be sure that we were tied into that piece of it. So about five and a half years ago or so, we came out and said that we do have the world's safest, um, most secure PCs. And where that comes from is really what's tied into our BIOS. And so I definitely want to be able to tie in on that and show again where it really does start to kick in from a hardware perspective. So when we think about the hardware itself and we think about where um, hardware alone from a security standpoint, it really does start at that BIOS level. So when you think about um, the devices that are being used, you think about the hardware that's being used, it really is what's most secure at that device level, first of all. And so as you can see on the screen, there's this chip that kind of sits in the middle of our hardware specifically. There's this chip that sits right here, and it really does start to control some of these other features that are out there. And if you're familiar with it, I know, I know our sales team with Inside is very familiar with it, but if you're familiar with it as a customer standpoint, one of the things to think about is what, what's kind of taking place and, and where does this impact your security protocols? So there's certain things that are absolutely tied to this security controller as well as um, being able to self-heal. So this chip that's in our, in our board is basically a self-healing and HP has the only device that is self-healing from the standpoint that if there's a BIOS attack that we can go in, the system will go in of course, and have a self-healing where it takes you back to your golden image. And so there's elements that are tied into the sure stack in general of our hardware that not only come with some of the hardware, but there are things that you can get added in from if you have, for example, if Insight works with you on your imaging or if Insight works with you on other security protocols, there's elements of this that you can have added in to that from that, from that scenario. Or there's things that, of course, we're going to talk about that you can put on top of the hardware itself. But there's quite a bit that really kind of runs from the device itself. And I've got one more slide that I want to share from a hardware perspective when we think about um, delivering the most secure and, and, again, the term, the manageable PCs. So our platform security, you can definitely see down here um, and on the bottom kind of grouping that we have here. And we've got things like Sure Recover. We have Sure Start. So all of these things are very tied in. And depending on what devices you're purchasing through Insight, 
may depend on what exactly is coming on your particular device. And so it's something that you may want to get with your Insight sales team and say, listen, these are the devices that I'm working through today. Maybe you're re-imaging. Maybe you're going through the process of, of making changes to your hardware. And so maybe, number one, you may not be aware of these that are sitting out there. Maybe, number two, it's just a matter of reactivating them. So I think it's important to be able to know exactly what's coming on the devices that, that chances are you may be leveraging today. But there's things like Sure Admin that allows you to go in and make sure that you've got the right BIOS administration. There's Sure Start, which, again, is looking for that firmware threat detection. So if you're using HP devices today, you may have a screen at the very beginning that pops up like a flash, a flash screen that says, you know, secured by HP SureStart, or maybe it says secured by HP Wolf, depending again on what device you have. And so depending on that, this comes as the platform security. Then some of the things we're going to talk about today specifically is the security software. So we're going to talk a little bit more about SureSense, SureClick, and then what we're doing, of course, with um, Sure Access and absolutely Protect and Trace. Then the last piece of that is that security control panel that I mentioned on the previous slide. And this really starts to tie into your security management. It ties into your threat intelligence, and it allows that visualization to what's going on with the attack. And so this is where it really starts to set aside and become a differentiator when you're thinking about the devices that are being used in uh, your infrastructure, the devices that you're talking to your Insight sales team with. And so it's important to be able to kind of look at the different things from a security perspective that start again with the hardware and, and really looking from the BIOS to the browser. So one of the things I want to touch on, one of the first ones is going to be uh, Wolf Protect and Trace. So this is a product that came out in the last year. Some of you may be using similar products, but it really is around being able to find the device, being able to lock it, and being able to erase it. So if you're predominantly an HP customer of Insight, this is a product that you absolutely can add into your infrastructure because it does work on HP devices only. So again, it's find it, lock it, and erase it. And we have a great roadmap that's coming along with what we're doing with our Protect and Trace. And that roadmap is gonna include where they don't have to connect into the network or into the internet to be able to actually track that down. And so we're looking at that at our second quarter as part of our roadmap. And so that has sparked a lot of of conversations in regards to how can we actually go out if someone's not connecting to the network or not being able to connect to the internet for whatever reason, can we still go out there, find it, lock it, and be able to erase it? So we're leveraging this quite a bit, as I mentioned, in regards to our HP devices, not only for our laptops, but also some of our selected desktops. So if this is something you want to have a bigger conversation around, absolutely the best idea would be to sit down and talk with your Insight sales rep and figure out what does your infrastructure look like and what would this look like for the HP devices that you have on hand? So Wolf Protect and Trace is absolutely one element in addition to what we're doing with just the hardware alone. So when we talk about as well moving into kind of that software layer, what do we want to be able to add on top of what we're doing with our devices? Some of the gaps that we've exploited, and, and this is where the interest level comes in. And the idea behind this is, is that some of you all may be making security decisions some of you all may not be part of that process, but if you're in IT, you're absolutely affected by the decisions that are being made from security. So you may not be choosing what security protocols you want to be able to use and leverage, but because you're responsible for the endpoint devices, you're still responsible for remediation or for patching or for some of these other elements. And so to be able to raise enough curiosity out of this conversation is really the idea behind this is to have a bigger conversation internally with your peers and partners, and then come back to Insight, have a conversation with Insight about what you're doing with security and where this would fit. And so that's really the idea behind this, is to see if we can get those conversations started with the right groups that possibly we can expand this out and have the right um, engagement based upon who those teams are. So with that, some of the gaps that we've looked at, that we've heard from our customers, from our partners over the last couple of years, especially with the pandemic, is number one, social engineering. So when we think about social engineering, this becomes a big factor for so many customers because they have a, and I'll, I know the term is probably overused at this point, but it's a hybrid work model. So you have customers that have employees that are working from home, they're working for, from other places, they're working from the office, maybe they're going back and forth. And so to be able to use their device for multiple purposes, have multiple logins, they're not always behind the network. And social engineering becomes a big factor for there because a lot of times as well, 
those employees could be using their work device for their personal. And I think that we're seeing more and more of that as we kind of get in um, to our new, whatever this new procedures and now is, so to speak. And so social engineering, I mean, I myself, I like to look up shoes. Shoes, and then all of a sudden what ends up happening is another place that I go, maybe it's LinkedIn or maybe it's another device or what have you. What ends up happening is sure enough, those shoes start showing up on all those other feeds. And so then it's as simple as clicking on something. So really what they want you to be able to do is they want, meaning the bad guys, want our customers, our end users, to be able to click on something to kick off an activation sequence. And so the goal behind it is how do we start to minimize that? Because we know people are going to potentially click and they're not using sophisticated you know, tool sets in regards to trying to get into our networks. It's actually as simple as clicking on an email or clicking on a link or clicking you know, within a chat box where somebody shares a link with them. So that's one element of it. Patching. Patching is another big issue. Patching will forever be behind the bad guys. When you think about the patches that are coming out, we've always had Patch Tuesday when it's come to Microsoft. And what ends up happening is once a month, you get Patch Tuesday. Microsoft says, hey, over the last 30 days, we found about 87 different vulnerabilities. This is what needs to be patched and updated. And what we find is in a lot of cases with our IT departments, they're going through the patching process and they're doing all the things that they need to be able to do but there's still devices that aren't patched. There's still, if you look at number four on here, there's still those zero day exploits that are taking place and happening. And so when we think about that, it becomes a big factor in regards that patching will forever be behind the bad guys. And so what's interesting about that is it ties into your business email and it ties into those zero day exploits that you see on here. So business email is constantly up for debate in regards to being compromised. So all it takes is a click within a link that gets sent over. So an example that I like to use actually is a customer that we started working with about a year ago. Um, they wanted to do a POC and they have about 135,000 devices that sit in their environment and they range about 70 different countries. And so what's interesting about it is that they wanted during the POC, the CISO received a email and it looks like it came from their CFO requesting some additional information on tax documents. And so he said, you know what, chances are um, it's, we know that it's a bad email. So we know that, that it's going to be something that's not true. And so he said, let's go ahead, because we're going through a POC, let's go ahead and test it. So sure enough, they did. And about a minute later, a red box popped up within the micro VM, because that's part of the process that you'll see on the demo. What ended up happening is, that ransomware notice came up and SureClick Enterprise was able to capture that and hold it so that it didn't go any deeper, it didn't go any further within their environment. What was really interesting though is they shared with us some forensics after the fact and they said, here's the thing. It took about 13 hours for the next tool to basically determine the same information that we were able to capture in that one minute. Now here's the thing, that tool that they had is not a bad tool. It's not that it wasn't doing the job that it needed to do, but you go back to that patching piece of it, tools still have to be patched, they still have to be updated. And so for that tool to do what it needed to do, it still had potentially 13 hours for whatever that particular ransomware was to kind of run through the system. So again, it's not that the tool is a bad tool, the right investment's been made for the security protocols that they have, but this is one more extra layer that you start to put in there from an isolation standpoint that allows it to hold it until those tools can do the job that they need to be able to do. And so that was one of the examples when we talk about business email compromise or we talk about those zero day exploits. And then the last piece of this, just from a gaps perspective, is security awareness training. I think most companies now are going through security awareness training. But again, when we think about a 30 minute, 45 minute training that's taking place today, we really can't expect that to stop those particular clicks because people are working through their email, they're working through their normal days and things like that are gonna happen. So you can't expect somebody even like myself who's in security every day um, even to be able to follow that. I still get HP themselves. We do phishing exercises within HP. And what ends up happening is I sure enough will click on something and then I get an email about 10 minutes later from my um, IT team that says, Carrie, that email should have been flagged. Um, we're going to need you to retake your cybersecurity training. And so then what ends up happening is I take the training again and sure enough, I'm sure it will happen again. So 
they might be questioning my my role at this point. But anyway, regardless, um, those are the type of things that we see happening kind of on a normal basis. And so when we think about what HP specifically is doing, not only with our hardware and what we're doing layering on top of that, it really is around the term that I've got underlined on this slide, which is compensating control. So when you're most vulnerable as a customer, meaning between patching, zero day attacks, we want to make sure that you are the most secure, meaning that if you have an isolation technology that's within your environment, that it's isolating it and holding it until these tools can do the job that they need to do. Right decisions have been made, absolutely, and the goal is not to replace. Security is very much a layered approach. And so when you look at that layered approach, our goal is not to replace anything that you have out there. We at HP run several different um, systems ourselves, several different tools, we leverage them. Um, but it's a layered approach. And so you want to be sure that you're looking at it all the way back from your endpoint to your network and so forth. And so those are things to keep in mind when you're having your conversations, um, not only from an inside sales perspective, but also from a customer perspective. So regardless of how that conversation's going and which direction, whoever's bringing up the conversation around security, it really is around what are you doing today for your endpoint? And so that's really where we kind of want to drive this connection between Insight customer and, of course, what HP is bringing to the table and partnering with Insight to be able to do. All right. So the thing that I'd like to do now is actually share with you all. It's about a five minute demo. It's going to walk you through exactly what the isolation technology looks like for um, SureClick Enterprise. Not only does it talk about the isolation element of it, but it absolutely talks about as well what we're doing for identity protection. So I'm going to go ahead and start this video for us. And I just want to be sure, um, let me make sure that everybody can hear what it is. So give me one minute and get us to the right screen. My apologies. All right. My, uh, give me, there we go. Pull that back up.
All right, let me stop this so it doesn't keep playing the next thing. All right, bear with me for one second. Let's get back to where we were. All right, so a couple of things just on that video is we talked about those micro VMs that the, the data is being pulled into as far as the ransomware attack. The nice thing about that is that, you know, as it mentioned, it's not letting it go any deeper, any further within the environment itself. So one of the other things that, you know, I think one of my favorite quotes from one of our customers was along the lines of um, on Saturday, they had received a call from their IT team that basically said that they had um, had a breach. And the CISO said, well, did SureClick Enterprise capture it? And they said, yes. And he said, great, then let's talk about it on Monday. Because one of the things that he knew is that it absolutely was isolated and that they could get the threat forensics that were tied to it. And then of course, from there, they could go in um, and look at what they needed to do, what tools and so forth they could leverage and what were the details that were wrapped behind it. So it gives the teams time to be able to go in and do that. And so when you think about the pillars of security themselves and really you know, what your conversations are collaboratively is around overall of course protection. What's the visibility that you can actually see into the threats that are coming? What's the efficiency that's tied to it? What's the overall user experience? Because that's the nice thing too, when you go back to, again, having people work in remote locations, when you're thinking about people going through security awareness training, imagine the confidence that it gives somebody like myself to know that if I go to a website and I wanna put in my information, it's gonna stop me if it knows that that's a non-trusted website. Um, or if I click on something that I'm not supposed to, it's gonna isolate it and it's gonna get notified that, hey, I clicked somewhere. And so it, it gives that level of confidence, not only from a user, but from an IT team and a security team that that's there and available. Even though companies still go through security awareness training and so forth, it still brings that extra layer of confidence. And then the last piece is compliance and audit. So being able to have that threat forensics to know right off the bat where it's not taking um, you know, a, an amount of time to be able to go through patching processes and so forth. And again, all the tools that are put in place, they have their place. They have the work that they're supposed to do and they're responsible for. But again, it's that layered approach, making sure that we're looking at it from the endpoint itself, you know, all the way back to, in, to your EDRs and into your network. We're not trying to remediate the threat itself. We're trying to isolate it and make sure that it's housed so that it does not infect and go through the rest of the environment but allows the teams the right amount of time. Because regardless of, of how many different processes, programs, tools we put into our environments, clicks are still getting through and we hear about it all the time in the news. So keep that in mind as well. So really it becomes down to these pillars. And then when you think about just the endpoint isolation, inherit protection, right? It's zero trust. So basically running everything from untrusted sources in an isolated space on that endpoint doesn't rely on detecting in anything. It's basically protecting the systems. And then it is protecting both corporate and personal vectors, which we know has a crossover right now. The other thing that's important is that um, what's interesting, you know, just when you think about the protection from the endpoint itself, and when you think about what's being wrapped around here, um, again, is allowing that extra layer. And how do we enhance that for not only our IT teams, our users, and our security teams? And so that really starts to go into these operational use cases. So think about it for just a minute. We talked about this a little bit when I was talking about raising up enough curiosity for you as the customer to talk to your insight sales team 
And then of course for Insight to be able to have that conversation with you all, but think about incident response relief, right? So one of the things specifically is that typically when there's some sort of breach, there's a cost that's tied to it, whether it's a person personnel cost, whether it's a monetary cost because something has actually taken place and, and they're demanding funds or whatever the case may be, it may not affect it from a, you know, a dollar amount, but it could pr or, uh, affect productivity. We've seen so many of these that show up in the news and it's not even that they're going after initially trying to get to like my credit card number to be able to use my credit card. They're wanting to shut down productivity so that it causes enough pain that somebody will pay them to get out of that. And so if you read a lot of the stories that are out there, that's the goal. And what's interesting about it is the goal is they kind of do this tag team, right? So if they know one company has been hit, they try to hit it again. It's just like insurance when you are at home, right? And you have a break in in your home. If the bad guys are paying attention and watching, they know that chances are insurance replaced all of those items. So you have a likelihood to get hit again. And it's just kind of the laws of numbers. And so we see that a lot of times too, even with the bad behaviors of, of these hackers that are coming through. So incident response becomes a big part of that. And if we can isolate it so that, the, so that customers can respond appropriately, then that starts to help that and enhances that. Security awareness training I've talked about you know, enough in regards to how it enhances that from not only a customer standpoint, from an end user standpoint, from an IT and security standpoint, it enhances that. But think about the regulatory enhancements. One of the things that we get asked all the time is where does Wolf Security set in Gartner's magic quadrants, right? Because we focus on those magic quadrants, we need to know where it sits. The thing is, is there's not really a quadrant that's tied specifically to isolation, but there are several quadrants that are tied to these regulatory enhancements like patch management, incident response, security awareness training, and we kind of blanket over all of those. And so we start to enhance all of those different features. And so when you start to look at the overall picture, that's where it starts to come together and starts to get a little bit more clear. So one of the things that I'll include, and we'll make sure that we send these slides out to everybody, we have a very specific um, case study. And this is one um, that we did specifically with um, Masonicare. And so we have a short version where basically it's just a highlight talking why they decided to go with SureClick Enterprise. And then there's a full version that kind of, it goes into more of the technical and the detail elements of it. And so we'll want to be sure to send that out to both sides so that you have the opportunity to see really kind of where that drives into it. Um, and so I want to be sure to highlight that when you get a copy of the slides to be sure to take a look at um, these, this particular case study with a customer, um, because that could raise some questions, but it also could answer some questions that you as a customer want to be able to talk to your sales team about, um, questions that you may want to talk to your security team about. So I think that there's some good feedback that you can get from both of these. The other thing that I want to talk about, and maybe some of you are familiar with this, um, not only do we have SureClick Enterprise, which is really at the endpoint, and it's at every endpoint device that any user within a corporation uses, but the other thing that we're really focused on and what we're getting a lot of good feedback on is Sure Access Enterprise. And what this is, is that if anyone has a PAWS initiative, and PAW is a privileged access workstation, so if anyone has a PAW initiative that they're working on, which is where you have an admin that has specific access to applications, and typically that particular device does not connect out to the network, it doesn't have access into the internet, et cetera, because they wanna limit any type of opportunity for somebody to tap into that. What we've done is we've taken the same isolation technology that we're using with SureClick Enterprise, and we've added that to our Sure Access Enterprise. What that means is that when an admin is logging in to this privileged workstation that has all the details around the applications, it does the exact same thing. It's basically isolating it and all they see versus being able to see screens or what have you, they'll see a, a blank screenshot. And I'll show you the demo on this as well, just so you can get a highlight of it. There's no access to be able to execute or into the IO state. And there's no way to intercept or interject keystrokes. So they can't see what the passwords are. They can't see what the keystrokes are. And so really it starts to, to, to align to the idea that an admin could really leverage one device, but be able to do both jobs that they're required for. And that's protecting the endpoints as well as the applications. And so that's something very specific that I think is important to also talk about with the IT team and with the security team, depending on who's managing those applications. And so one of the things I want to be able to do, and I'm going to do the same thing that I just did a minute ago and see if I can get this up and running for you. But this is our demo for Sure Access, and it's a little bit shorter. It's not very long. 
Um, but it'll give you an idea of what we're doing. Hey, Carrie, sorry to interrupt. We can't seem to hear the audio on this video. Um, oh, okay. Perhaps leave your audio on and let's see if that works. Okay, um, my audio should be on, but let's just double check. Let's just make sure I'm good. All right, let's try it one more time. And if not, um, then I can, I'll send out the demo as well, but let's just double check and see if, if this will work. So give me one moment. Thank you for interrupting. Yes, thank you. Uh, not a problem. Are you able to hear it at all this time? No, still not hearing it on our end. Okay, all right, my apologies. So what I'll do then is I'll go back over to the slides, but I will send this out um, as well as the Masonic Hair video that I talked about. So you'll all gain access to this and you can go in and absolutely take a look, but it's leveraging the same isolation technology that we use within SureClick Enterprise, but it's, it's raising it up a level to the application so that again, the bad guys can't get into the applications to infect those to be able to have access out to the network. Um, so I'll be sure to include that as well. Some of the things too, I just wanted to give as a highlight to kind of the breach examples where they leverage privilege activity is think about like the IT administrator, right? So here's an example of some of these very specific breaches, but an administrator doing multiple things at once using the same machine, uh, doing research and visited a compromised website, infecting the PC with malware. And then the admin uses the same PC to access the active directory. And then the admin lost control of the PCs. Hackers were able to have access to the PC and then they could move laterally with into other systems and so forth. Same thing with an, with an OT or an IOT administrator and with a financial analysis. And so this gives some good ideas kind of what's taking place. When you think about the financial um, analyst itself, sensitive web portal access, right? And so the portal had a patch update that was not patched. The threat actor gained control through the vulnerability and the threat actor obtained secure data through that vulnerability. And so being able to have that isolation piece that we saw in the original demo for SureClick Enterprise gives that added level, level of confidence. So PAW initiatives themselves, if some of you have done them yourself, you know that it's a lot of work. It's a lot of um, dedication to be able to get those set up, and there's a lot that's tied into it. And so when you look at potentially being able to layer Sure Access on top of that, it minimizes some of that leverage to be able to what it takes to set up. And then in addition to that, where it gives that added protection to be able to use the same machine, minimize cost of having multiple separate machines, you know, admin passwords and kind of how that's structured. So definitely worth a conversation if that's something that you're entertaining within your own environment, but something definitely touch on. And the last kind of, you know, highlight that we want to look at specifically around privileged activity um, is really, you know, again, eight out of 10 organizations, they prioritize this privilege user security, right? They want to be sure that the admins are extremely secure, that the applications are locked down, and that, you know, outside vectors cannot gain control of that. 54% are not using separate physical devices for privilege activities, and it's not that that's a bad thing, but that's one of the reasons that so many companies moved to having two different devices is because they didn't want to risk it. With sure access and what um, we're locking in to be able to do, you wouldn't need those two different devices. You still could leverage that one and feel confident known in that isolation technology of what that looks like. 74% um, of those data breaches though occurred within privileged accounts. And so it shows that the activity is definitely being more focused towards that. So maybe it's a layered approach even here is where we look at the admin side of the business and then look at the endpoint side of the business. And so these are great conversations to bring up, you know, within your own internal um, corporation, but as well and with your teams, of course, but as well with your insight sales team um, for them to bring in. And so one of the things that, you know, I definitely want to be able to highlight when we think about all the conversation around security, it really is about opening the door for a conversation. And it really is about, you know, tying into the fact of number one, um, security is happening at every level. It is a layered approach within every single company that is out there today. And it doesn't matter how big you are. It doesn't matter how small you are. Every single person is potentially a target. 
And so what's interesting is being able to take that layered approach, even if you don't have, for example, a specific security team that's tied into the business, having that conversation with your partner, having that conversation and bringing in you know, what we're doing with Wolf Security from an HP standpoint, in my mind, I kind of call it a win-win-win, where we really focus on um, the customer, the partner, and then HP, and us being able to pull it together. So between Insight, HP, and you as the customer, being able to pull that conversation together, determine where you are in your security protocols, where you are with your tools, what makes good sense for you, this is really where the conversation starts, and then being able to build out from there. And so HP has a, a team that's, that's absolutely dedicated to security, to support insight in regards to these conversations. And something that was extremely you know, important is to be able to also look at what insight's providing from a security standpoint and be able to lock in with them and complement those pieces. So depending on where you are in your journey, it's worth that conversation of having. And that's really the idea around this. And so one of the things I wanna open it up for, and I know we've got about 15 minutes left or so, I definitely wanna open it up for questions, um, comments, or any other um, feedback that we would like to either share or collaborate together as a customer insight and HP. So I'm going to um, go back to our main screen, give me one second, and I'm going to see what questions we have. So bear with me. Hopefully everybody can still hear me okay. All right, so let me look at a couple of different questions that we've had. So we've had a couple that have come in. So let me go ahead and start asking um, a couple or answering a couple of these. So number one, um, and we get this quite often, what is the impact that this has on the user? Um, and so what, I, and what I'm taking that as meaning is how does, it, how does it impact their machine? Do they see any noticeable difference? And the answer is no. And so when you're using... Um, whether it's our Wolf Pro security or you're using SureClick Enterprise in addition to this, there's an icon that pops up at the bottom that basically shows that you're protected by Wolf. It allows you to see any of the micro VMs that are going on. We use it in-house at HP. And so one of the things I actually forget that it's on until something pops up and says that I shouldn't type in my credentials or what have you. So I don't see that it has a direct impact to the day-to-day -day work. And that's what we've experienced with most of our customers. So I want to be sure that, you know, when you look at that and you think about the applications that are being put on the system, uh, very minimal in regards to, if any, seeing any type of degradation um, in your system usage. So that's number one. Um, number two, is there a downloadable of the slides? Absolutely. So we'll be sharing these slides specifically with Insight. And um, um, Aubrey or um, Kareen, is there a way that is easy for them to get it? Is there going to be, will they be sent out to all the attendees? So the video, this webinar video will be available on demand after the fact. And yes, we will send it out as well as it'll be posted on social media. Fantastic, thank you. And then, um, and then the next question is in regards to being able to do like a proof of concept or if you have Wolf Edition, can you leverage that? And so one of the questions, and I appreciate that, one of the questions that has come up as well is that some customers through Insight have purchased what we call our Wolf Edition hardware. And so you may not even know that if you have a Wolf Edition piece of hardware, that it has a one year license that's on it. So if you have a piece of hardware and it's got a sticker on it that has a wolf on it and it's a blue sticker, then you know that um, potentially there's a one year license that's already on there to be able to leverage what you saw with the isolation technology. And so is there a way that you can leverage those within your environment? Absolutely, and if you have 25 or more of those, and this number will be changing as we get into the mid part of our first quarter, but um, if you have 25 or more of those devices, you can download a security controller, which will allow you to have visibility into those. So if that's something that you've done with Insight currently and you've purchased these devices through Insight, then you can leverage that today with those devices. Now, Wolf Security and SureClick Enterprise are OEM agnostic. So if you have a mixed fleet using other OEMs, then you absolutely can put this out on those devices. Mm -hmm. And so what's interesting is that let's say that you've got a fleet of 250 devices, maybe you've got a fleet of 5,000 devices, whatever it is, if you want to be able to expand this out and do kind of a mix because you've purchased some of these Wolf Edition or you want to expand this out, 
then you have the ability to be able to do that as long as it's a win 10 of ice and, of, and above. So if it's win 10 and above, then there is no issue with you being able to use this across the whole fleet. Um, so with that said, um, also being able to leverage, you know, even just if you don't have the, the Wolf Edition, for example, if you didn't purchase a piece of hardware that has the Wolf Edition on it, can you do a POC? And the answer is absolutely yes. You would work with your Insight salesperson, talk with them about wanting to be able to do a proof of concept within your area, and they'll get together with our team. And so um, from our team, Amy Nanowski, who leads out our, our relationships with our partners, um, she would work closely with that sales team to help them get that established and get that set up. So I want to be sure, too, that the first point of contact will be your Insight salesperson. They'll leverage their resources from HP. As I mentioned, we have a security team that's dedicated um, to assisting our partners, making sure that they have success within the POCs and the conversations on security. And so we want to be sure that we can tie those pieces together. So it turns into that win, win, win. Are there any other questions or any other feedback? Those were probably the four main questions that we got here. And I'm trying to see if there's anything else specific um, that we wanted to be able to touch on. And I think we've got about, um, it looks like we've got right around 10 minutes or so left. So Corinne and Aubrey, I didn't know if there was anything you all wanted to be able to talk about as well to kind of pull the pieces together for Insight and customers. This is all you, Carrie. You've done a fantastic <laughs> job. Uh, I do not have anything to add. Corinne, um, if you have anything to add on the security standpoint here, please feel free to chime in. No, no, I'm okay. This presentation was fantastic. Thank you. Very good. Well, I, I want to be sure to open it up again. I know with, you know, some of the questions that come out there, a lot of them are around the devices and so forth. Please know that if you're leveraging HP devices today, and I'll say this one more time, if you're leveraging HP devices today, there may be quite a bit in regards to the Sure stack that you may not be aware of. So if you're re-imaging or if Insight is working with you on your image, if you're doing your image in-house, these particular tools are still available and just need to be activated. And so there's some great features and functionality from an HP standpoint um, that we can help you with. And I think, again, that's where a great conversation can start with Insight to say, listen, these are the, dev the devices that I'm leveraging today. D you know, what, what exactly is on these devices that we can take a look at? And then how can we start to grow this conversation to what we're looking at with the isolation technology? And so I really think that that's a great place that the conversations can start. And then, as I mentioned, I apologize that the one demo wasn't working, um, but I will include that to make sure that the team has it when all of that gets sent out, as Aubrey was talking about. So we'll be sure to include that, and you can take a look at that. And that ties in, of course, to the PAW initial privilege access workstation. And so I, I really just want to say, I, I think we're kind of wrapping up a minute or two early as far as like where I was hoping from the presentation part. So again, I apologize for the technical difficulty, um, but maybe this will give you 10 minutes back um, before your next meeting starts. If there's any other questions, please reach out to your Insight salesperson. They absolutely have full access to our team here from a security standpoint, and we're happy to support them in any of the conversations that you all may be having. And that's everything that we have from our end. And I just want to say I appreciate your time today. I know that um, a lot of times taking time out of your day to sit through a webinar can be a lot, but hopefully you found this in informational and you found this valuable for some of the layered approaches to security and where HP and Insight are coming together to provide a security solution. So thank you all so much for your time. Again, I appreciate it. My name is Carrie Atkins, and I, uh, again, just want to say thank you. Thank you, Carrie. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you, everybody.